Um, Did you just get that out of the dryer? What? Did you get that out of the dryer? Just what? Like, smells uh, fabric softener fresh since you got in the car. I. No. Because my car smells like a. <laughs> your, your car it's every awesome. once in a great while smells like a bag of Fritos <laughs> I never have Fritos That's you never I mean. had Fritos? no I don't have I don't eat them oh okay no I think anybody who has kids eventually your car smells like Fritos whether you want them to I think or not. it's the combination of coffee breakfast sandwiches and shame <laughs> <laughs> Comment, like, subscribe, repeat. Well, a couple weeks ago, I don't even think it was a couple weeks ago. I, uh, maybe it was two weeks ago. Thomas Davis posted a video um, advising, you know, the world that the Panthers told him that they were not going to be bringing him back for another season. And it, it was heartfelt, and he was talking about how much football he's got left in him. Um, I mean, I get it, right? Yeah. But here you have the starting linebacker for a Sean McDermott defense when you need linebacker depth. So, what are we going to do? I'm just going to start purchasing Carolina apparel for you. <laughs> this, I, I know that a lot of people are going to get frustrated right off the bat saying, you know, the Carolina connection is a horse that's been beaten to death a couple times. I think that's, a, I think that's fair. Right, because I mean, it's something that comes up often. But you're talking about the captain of the defense. Yeah, this and, has been brought up to us a couple times. I right. believe I, I, I mean, we've read a couple of comments where people have been like, "Listen, what about Thomas Davis as a depth signing?" <clears throat> I think that's where he is. You're not bringing him in to be a starter. No, no, no. and I think that I think Lorenzo would love it. Since He's the only guy in the linebacker room that has kids and a family and everything. Yeah, like Ryan Tell Alexander's the only one drinking Metamucil in the morning before he hits the weight room. Everything. Is he the only one over 30 in the uh, linebacker room? <laughs> oh, dropping, yeah, he is. They're dropping Pedialyte on him. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, it's it's a depth signing. It's, it's something that... If you if you think of bringing in an influx of young linebackers to learn a defense, even though another horse has been beaten to death, it's Leslie Frazier, not McDermott. Yeah. But McDermott oversees it. But I mean, can't can't say that. I mean, uh, when the Patriots went to the Super Bowl, was it Matt Patricia's defense? Or was it Bill Belichick's? Well, and we saw the Patriots do the same thing. Like, I remember when... What when floor junior, is this year? Well, and Junior Seau came in, and everybody thought Seau had been done for years. And Seau came in and played for the Patriots and played yeah. relatively well, but again, well, in, a limited, in a limited capacity. Yes, they asked you to do a very specific role. Here's what we want you to do. Right. If okay. you're not going to be this guy, if you're not going to be the guy breaking down film, if you're not going to be the guy talking about assignments, if you're not going to be the guy holding accountable on the sideline when you're not playing, holding guys accountable to their responsibility, then your time isn't gonna be for, you're not gonna spend your time here. Like, and that's that's the, the phase of the career the player needs to be ready to come in. And just as long as that's clear, Thomas Davis can make sense in Buffalo, but eh, as a package player. Here's my here's my question to you. I have two okay. questions. All right. One, <clears throat> which is probably the easier one, does Davis replace Williams as the second veteran leader, even though he's not on the field all the time? Of that defense. Okay. Because he replaced that captain's role that's been vacated. Okay. And the other thing is this. If you're bringing him in to mentor young linebackers, that what does that say about the development of Milano and Edmonds? I think this helps. This this move is for Edmonds, not for Milano. Right? Now, while Milano still has some things to learn, I mean, the fact is the guy played at a Pro Bowl level he all did. season, he and he did. played at a Pro Bowl level the eight games of the season before that. Or a third thing, sorry. Does that mean that they're going to bring in a lot more young linebackers if they sign Davis? Linebackers, you can pick up in the draft in, in undrafted free agency, and there's a whole other football league out there now that, yeah. you know, is going to be developing players as well that fall into the free agent pool 
as soon as their season's over with. They're actually even during their season. So you, I think you look at this team being young and them cycling out, but could they bring in a couple veteran linebackers? I mean, they could. Yeah, I mean, they could. But if you can bring in somebody who's willing to fall on the sword to teach, to play, to contribute, and to just give it his all, Thomas Davis right now is that is he saying that he's that player. So why wouldn't you add a guy like that? True. True. And he's he's ready to accept that role. Not a lot of guys accept that role. Exactly. Right. So a player in his position, I think he's he's understanding the position that he's in, and this is the transition he has to make. Do you think he's qualified for that role? I don't know about that. I mean, th- I, I would have to, I would actually have to go back to McDermott on that. McDermott's opinion there would be very, very important because I'd want to know the player Thomas Davis was when he lost two seasons to injury. Where was he? Yeah. What was he doing? Yeah. Was he still at the facility? Was he just at home? He was on IR, so I mean, he wasn't helping the team, but he could st- he could still go. Yeah, no. He, he, so I, where, yeah, where great, was? That'd be great to know. That'd be great to know what he was doing. But I like it. I like it for a multitude of reasons. But I still have questions about it, like the ones that oh, I asked yeah. you. I still would have questions of why the, is he there to be the mentor that was vacated by Williams? Is he be there because the development of these players are not coming along the way they want him to, or <clears throat> is it a situation where? You're looking for him to contribute in a in a major way, and you're trying to find a cheap piece to do that. That's fine. I mean, I, it's not hateful. Would I rather see C.J. Mosley than him? Well, C.J. Mosley's 26, so I mean, you're talking about a guy that's like 10 years younger, you know. But I, again, a little. I bit- understand, but you're replacing what you're signing in leadership to yeah. vacate a leadership role for a guy who's going to be a productive role, right? And to your point. Go over there, Edmonds. You can well, go to the outside now. But that's, Mosley's in the middle. But th- I think that's the major difference between those two players is if you sign Thomas Davis, you're not asking Tremaine Edmonds to do anything different than what he's doing now. No. If you sign C.J. Mosley, you're saying we're moving Tremaine Edmonds. Or you're saying we're going to build a linebacker package that you're not going to be able to tell where pressure's coming from. The major difference is we know that's not Leslie Frazier's defense. Well, no. So much. No, no, no. I want to hear this. Because, I mean, I, I love the signing of C.J. Mosley because it simply makes your defense better. Yes. Right? Yes. It utilizes the skills of the defense in a, in a very fascinating way that makes it tough for a quarterback to come out and say, no. he's the Mike. Yes, exactly. Because yes. there's three guys across the board. That because that's, what's, that's what defines what's going on with the defense and how protections are set. Right. Well, I think 57's this, the mic, 49's the mic. Well, that's what I, he always has I to do. I think a lot, of, a lot of football fans hear that, but I don't think they understand <laughs> why things circle around the mic. So can you just go in just real briefly and say, why why is he the son of the defense, right? Everything rotates around the mic, but why is he the son of the defense? Because then what happens is you get to identify what the where the outside linebackers are and where pressure may come. So if you identify the mic, uh, if I come up to the line and I'm identifying Mosley as the mic, and then there's two linebackers over here, Okay, chances are pressure is coming from one of them. Right. If the if the linebacker, one of those two linebackers, identifies the mic, then it's even. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If there's two linebackers right or left of the mic, then you can start to identify pressure. It tells the back who to block, what's going on. Mostly, what happens is in the, in the center part of it, the way the protections usually roll is that the 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 center and the two guards, right? They will make they will call out a number. They call out a one. There's a one. There's one guy within the center and two guards. All right. So that means it's typically a three four. Right. All right. If they call out a two, typically going to be a four three. So you're referring to the defensive tackle. The defensive, defensive front. Yeah. yeah. Two, two defensive tackles or a nose guard. So he will call out a number. Quarterback will call out the court. Call out the mic, and then they'll be able to set their protections accordingly. So if I call out the mic 57 on this side, there's two linebackers over here. Then my running back will know that either. A safety is going to drop down in the box and come off of this side, watch that late, or my primary responsibility is over here. Right. But it also depends on which way the play is going. Right. Okay? If I'm looking front side to throw and I got I call the mic out and there's, there's a couple linebackers over here, then I have to the running back has to go there. Right. All right. Protection is going to slide this way to go to the back side. So in that respect, that's that's how that whole formula there's a lot of things that are intertwined in it. However, I'm gonna sound like the announcers do when they talk about, hey, did you know uh, 
Chris Hogan played lacrosse. Oh, God. Did okay. you know that, did you know that uh, Nick O'Leary's grandfather yeah, is Jack Nick- Yeah. Um, Jack Nicklaus. I'm going to sound like it when I say that Leslie Frazier played in, on the 1985 Bears, right? Mm-hmm. Does he know about pressure and how to get pressure from multiple yeah, sides and angles? I get it, but... And you don't know where it's coming from, and it's most effective when you don't know where it's coming from. If you have Mosley, Edmonds, and Milano, and you start rotating them to different sides, the guy does. If the guy comes up and identifies Edmonds as the mic, and the next play, Mosley's staring him in the face. Mm-hmm. What am I going to do? Well, I think it adds a different dynamic to how you approach the defense, right? Because a package will look different. Uh, based off the strengths of the linebackers, right? If Edmonds is in the middle versus Mosley in the middle. If an offense comes in and says, well, we're going to play action the first four drives because we want to try and suck Edmonds down, you're not going to do that to Mosley. Uh-uh. So I think it adds versatility across the defense, and I don't think it hurts Edmonds. I think it just utilizes his skills as a pass rusher a little bit better because he still comes into the line a little tall. When you ask him to pressure in the one, two, or three gap, he's really tall. He comes in really tall. He doesn't. He doesn't man up against guards very well. He yeah. does. He's a strong well, kid. No, let's just say, but like, that's technique. <clears throat> I think they can hone that over the off season. But you know, it gives you the option of let's say you're playing nickel, mm-hmm. just for just for just for fun. So well, Nick, yeah, nickel is nickel is four when, down linemen, right. two linebackers, and you have five uh, defensive backs. Right. All right. Let's just say you're just doing that, and you decide Milano is on the sideline. So okay. you have Mosley and Edmonds as your two linebackers that are sitting there. You drop Hyde down mm-hmm. where Edmonds was, and Edmonds goes on the side where Jerry Hughes is to blitz. Mm-hmm. He's already identified that it's nickel. All right, Edmonds is here. We're going to try to attack here because he's not a very good coverage linebacker at this point. Maybe we'll try to do play action. And then you see him immediately run to the corner of the line, yeah. and now Hyde or Poyer are standing there mm-hmm. with Mosley. Come on. That advantage that you Come have in trying to exploit the coverage is gone. That's ridiculous. Mosley, I think, and that's a head scratcher because a lot of people would be upset about signing CJ Mosley. I really do think that because a lot of people think that Tremaine Edmonds is the inside linebacker of this team. I don't, and I will not disagree with he could be. Right? Yeah. He absolutely could be. But why would you not want to make your team better? They're talking about approaching the draft and taking the best player on the board, period. Doesn't matter where they are. They're going to improve the football team. CJ Mosley does that still because. You have Milano, right, who could play inside if you really needed him to. Yeah. You have Edmonds, who can play inside. And you'll have Mosley, who spent his entire NFL career inside. And Mosley isn't your typical inside linebacker who's slow to everything. No, Mosley. He's not. He's 26. Where's he, he from? He can still move. I don't remember. You know, I don't remember this Roll stuff. Time. Oh, I see. Al- <laughs> I figured he was from Alabama. You're asking me that question. <laughs> But there's a there's a he connection. Can move. There's, he can a, move. there's a connection between Harbaugh and McDermott. They they coached on the Eagles at one point, so that connection is there. Why do you think they were able to call Baltimore mm-hmm. to trade for Tremaine Edmonds? <laughs> he calls up Harbaugh again. Listen, I've already given you yeah, one yeah, linebacker. Right, right. You want another right. one? Well, and from a contract standpoint, you're probably looking at a Starlet Tulule contract for mostly. Which is a lot for an inside linebacker. Five at 50 is probably where he's going to be. Hmm. But you get him until he's 31. It's a long-term commitment, but that mirror, that extends past Edmonds. You'll have Mosley longer than you'll have Edmonds off his rookie deal. Contract update. Mm-hmm. For everyone. What? That's that's freaking out about the uh, Star Latulity contract. Oh, yeah. Now... <clears throat> I'm gonna geek out a little bit. Okay. You we you know this. I don't, I'm not explaining it to you. <laughs> I'm still listening. Okay. So the way that it works, uh, you're allowed to designate certain players as a pre June first cut or a post June first cut. However, that is very limited. You can't yeah. have all of your players post June first cut and designate right. them like that. However, the Bills actually save money if they designate Star right now as a post June first cut. Okay. They don't. The dead money does not outweigh the cap savings. Okay. So everyone that's said, oh, five for 50, this is ridiculous. They don't all the time. I ended up doing some more research on the contract and everything. If they cut him, if they designate him as a post-June 1st cut for 2019, they save money. But that's but the important thing about the pre-June 1st and the post-June 1st is where that dead cap money goes, right? Yes. If you post-June 1st a guy, you can split it among two Over years. Over two years, yes, right. yes, yes. So he'll cost you money this year, he'll cost you money next year. Yeah, but but the, but he'll but save the overall money saving money this year, but 
everyone was talking about the five for fifty being such a daunting contract. I know I kind of got off the thing, but it, it, it just something that sparked in my head because I I've, well, I've read it a couple more times. Well, we could sign a couple of these guys if we didn't have to start for five for fifty. And I'm like, no, 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 it's not that daunting of a contract for what the guys asked to do. Now, back to what even started this whole thing with Thomas Davis. Mm -hmm. Lorenzo has the ability to put his hand in the dirt at defensive tackle yeah. and go. I don't think Thomas has that. Option. I agree with that. I don't. I don't think he's got. I think. I think Lorenzo Alexander is could still be an effective pass rusher. I. I don't know if Thomas Davis. And they signed him for three million dollars. So Thomas Davis wouldn't be asking for any right. more than that. Right. Change. Change. Show change. And I mean, I'll you're it. looking at your roster. <laughs> just as long. And here's the thing about that contract, right? Let's say he signs for one year, three million dollars, right? That money only becomes guaranteed if he's on the roster come week one. So if you bring him in, and he's not the guy that you thought he was going to be at this age, mm -hmm. you can cut him. Just cut him. What's, what, what, you're not going to lose anything. Who cares? It doesn't hurt you. You know, you get to bring him in. You get to see what he's like. You figure it out. Does it work? Is this going to work? Yes. Is it not going to work? All right, your time's done. But once he's on the roster week one, his contract's guaranteed for the rest of the season. Three million. I get Nothing. it. I get it. But it, it. but it is it is an important factor to understand about veteran players like that. If they're on the roster week one, their contract becomes different. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But another point to bring up. It's a very interesting question. I'll leave it for you guys. You bring a guy like Thomas Davidson and make him a captain immediately, what message does it say to the rest of your team about the current players that are there? Just something to think about. 